Family of Shannon Watts filing a wrongful death lawsuit against her husband. Frank and Sandra Rusek filed that lawsuit on November 19th, the same day Chris Watts was sentenced to life in prison without parole in Colorado. Watts, as you know, pleaded guilty to murdering his pregnant wife and two children. The Ruseks from Southern Pines are seeking unspecified financial damages for pain and suffering, as well as funeral and burial expenses. What did his attorneys tell you about contact with him, you know, starting what, with his None. arrest? No contact. Everything is recorded. No contact. Uh, no letter writing. Uh, I didn't see the harm in the letters. You know, hi, son. Love you. Keep fighting. Uh, we are here to support you. What is wrong with that? What can the DA do uh, about letters like this? Why couldn't we just write him a letter. We, were, we did what we were told to do. When they called us to tell us that Chris was thinking of a plea, that he wanted to speak to us about it. And when we got down there, it was a lie. They, he, they wouldn't let us talk to him about anything. They said they would defend him if he wanted to, to go forward, but he said he didn't want to go forward. And the bottom line is you would have liked to have been part of that discussion with him I before have. he made that decision. That's what I thought we were going down there for. At least let us talk to him. Well, County District Attorney just released nearly 2,000 pages of documents. Prosecutors say Watts killed his family because of an affair he was having with a co-worker, Nicole Kessinger. In a recorded interview with police the day Shannon and the girls were found dead, Kessinger appeared distraught. It's so sad, and she's pregnant. And, you know, on, on our end, we God, didn't... God, they're so cute. They're so little. Like, wow. That... When his family went missing and it was everywhere on the news, Kessinger says she realized he'd been lying to her and she called the Weld County Sheriff's Office the day he was arrested. She's one of the people listed on the prosecution's witness list. I just wanted to help, she said, with a pregnant woman and two children missing. I was going to do anything that I could. Shannon, from what we've found so far, Chris Watts was having a relationship with a man. We just said that. They revealed police did an interview with this man's mother. Now, she says her son admitted to seeing Chris long before, quote, these horrible crimes occurred. She also said Chris paid him more than $300 on three separate occasions, and it was for lip injections. There are so many details right now. We're just combing through these pages to give you an idea. This is only part of the 2,000 page document. We're gonna have updates and we'll get you through all 2,000 pages uh, as soon as my colleagues get through it. Jackie, they talked about a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of time at home where you're not really there as they're thinking about this case. Now on the confession, as you talked about, something really interesting the district attorney told us is that they considered making a part of the plea agreement that Christopher Watts would have to confess more about what happened that night. The district attorney told us that Shanann's family didn't think he would take that deal. We also learned much more about what prosecutors believe happened that night. There are a few things that I want to talk about that you will see that are contained within those autopsy reports. Um, I'm going to be very general um, at this point. I hope you understand out of respect for the Rusick family who is still present. Um, part of the reason that we kept these sealed were for the following reasons. You will see in the autopsy report of Shanann Watts that forensic um, toxicology testing indicated that in spleen blood there was a blood alcohol level of 0.128. I want to be abundantly and very, very clear about this. This does not mean that she consumed alcohol, nor that she was intoxicated. The rumor around town is that Chris Watts is here in Waupon. This wouldn't be the first time a high-profile murderer was moved to the Dodge County Correctional Institution. This is the same prison Ed Gein, the man who inspired the movie Psycho, was held. Department of Corrections reports show Stephen Avery is behind bars here. in tonight.
The Colorado father, Chris Watts, who killed his pregnant wife and two young daughters and then pleaded for their return. Well, tonight, the wife's parents with our Amy Robach. The interview is coming in now, and Lindsay Davis gives us a first look. Chris Watts, the man whose brutal murder of his family shocked a nation, now moved to a prison outside of Colorado. Officials there citing security concerns because he's a high-profile offender. This comes after Shannon's parents sat down for an exclusive 2020 interview with our Amy Robach and opened up about what they saw in their daughter's marriage. They were amazingly happy. and Did he snap? He must have snapped because there's nothing else I could figure out what happened to him. There's no words right now to say what happened. Shannon's parents now struggling to reconcile the devoted husband they knew with the monster who took their daughter and grandchildren. Were there any warning signs? No. None at all. We turn next tonight here to a chilling piece of audio never heard before. Newly released recordings of Chris Watts being interrogated. He's the father who murdered his own wife and girls. And tonight, it is impossible to imagine how any father could share what he did about what his little girl said. Here's ABC's Clayton Sandell. It's a dark and disturbing dive into the mind of triple murderer Chris Watts, heard in a newly released interview with investigators. So that make sense. That's why I know you guys keep asking these questions, if it doesn't make sense to me. My granddaughter begged for her life. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty rough. Shannon Watts' family reacts to the chilling confession. He took Celeste's Yankee blanket and smothered her. And Bella's last words. She said, no, daddy. That's the last thing she said. And our granddaughter watched her sister die. Circulating online is now calling on the Wisconsin Department of Corrections to remove family photos from convicted murderer Chris Watts' cell walls. Watts pleaded guilty to murdering his wife and his daughters. The Change.org petition states the prison is violating its own values of prioritizing victims' advocacy by allowing Watts to have photos of his slain family. In a prison interview, Watts told investigators he has the photos of his wife Shannon and his daughters Bella and Cece on his prison cell walls, adding that he reads the Bible to them. He talks to them and reads his daughter's favorite book to the pictures at night. Do you intend to answer truthfully? <sighs> Chris. Based on a gripping true story. I love you. Oh, come here. Do you feel safe? Punchkins, hey. Tell us what happened. Those girls are my life. Daddy, no. Chris Watts, Confessions of a Killer. Premieres Saturday at 8 on Lifetime. Well, it's about to unfold in the form of a Lifetime movie. And today, Shanann's family is once again pleading with the public to stop the online harassment. Attorneys say the Ruziks have received numerous anonymous threats online. Back in July, the father of Shanann spoke out about the ongoing online harassment. And while it's tapered off, they're now worried the movie could reignite new speculations tainting their daughter's name. Anything where they implicate Shanann um, and refer back to the original confession and talk about the fact that she was somehow involved in this and blaming the victim and, and, and somehow asserting that she had something to do with the murder of her children. At the family's request, attorneys are looking into introducing a bill that could make it a crime to defame a deceased person. The attorneys did hint that the family is working with other production companies who have reached out, so we could be seeing more of the Watts tragedy on the big screen. What triggered it? How can a perfectly a normal young man, and he, he's normal, he was normal, but he wasn't evaluated when he came in to the system. So guilty play or not, the Chris Watts story is not over, not by a long shot. Boy, still so much out there, incredible. Okay.